I'm Salim. So currently, I'm working uh, with Pega Systems as a user experience designer. So today, I'm uh, basically going to talk about uh, how we can design for voice user interfaces. So I mean, uh, if you notice, uh, la past 20 years, every uh, few years there is a uh, digital disruption. So we started 1994. Uh, there is a web. 2002 search. 2006 social and 2010 mobile. So 2016 is going to be AI and voice. <clears throat> so uh, I mean the the requirement is more uh, for voice user interface designing, but uh, there are uh, across I mean industry leaders even with the industry leaders like Amazon. Uh, Google and uh, Microsoft, there is very less documentation available how to compile, design, and execute voice-enabled products. So I mean, uh, at Pega, we, we haven't started designing anything on uh, voice yet. But I mean, this uh, presentation is purely about how, uh, I mean, how we can design voice user interfaces that is purely based on the research and uh, my interest towards the uh, voice user interfaces. <coughs> So uh, if you notice, I mean, there are uh, around 500 plus million people in India who are yet to come online. So they haven't seen uh, the internet. They haven't seen any mobile. They haven't uh, uh, used laptops or computers. So uh, do you do you think voice? I mean, so voice is very accessible. It comes natural to us. I mean, there are so many benefits of voice. I mean, we start. Uh, uh, I mean, as a child, we, we first thing we do is talk. I mean, it is very natural to us. And voice is uh, available everywhere. I mean, it is accessible for everyone. Uh, but we uh, we just starting to use that technology. I mean, uh, voice enabled interfaces now. I think it is very, uh, there are so many benefits of uh, voice enabled U, UIs going forward. Uh, so accessibility is uh, one of the major, major thing. So that brings, uh, the f I mean, uh, we're going to discuss few use cases where exactly in Indian context we use voice uh, uh, enabled interfaces. So that brings my first use case, which is language support. So currently we, I mean, India is a very uh, culturally diversified country. We have uh, around 17 official languages and uh, uh, every uh, 500 kilometers you travel from point A to point B, there are different dialects. People speak different languages. But we don't have a, uh, a, a system where I can use my native language and get results out of it. So if we can, uh, if you can uh, get that, I think a lot of people, I mean, it is, it is differently hard to bring that, but if you want to reach that 500 plus million people market, you need to uh, you need to have uh, applications uh, catering to them. I mean, they, they are definitely not as literate as us. They, they haven't used any applications so far. Only thing they can do is uh, talk in their native languages and get. I mean, if we could uh, uh, bring results. Uh, uh, from their native languages, I think it will be uh, a huge, huge market. I mean, if you could identify that one product, it will be a big success. So that is one use case. Second use case is uh, agricultural. Uh, uh, I mean, India is again, uh, uh, Indian economy is mostly dependent on agriculture. We, we are doing agriculture for a long time, but we are not using any technology uh, in uh, agricultural uh, sector. Uh, if you notice, I mean, even uh, US and China are, are these are the countries who use most of the technology in agriculture and they produce more yield than India. I mean, uh, traditionally we are saying we are an agricultural country, but we are not able to uh, produce that yield. Uh, uh, our other countries which use more technology, they are, they are doing well in that country. If we could uh, utilize uh, AI and voice enabled interfaces into that sector, I think that will be again a, a, a I mean, big success. So we have data, I mean, we have a lot of data uh, in terms of, uh, uh, I mean, uh, our weather and uh, we have, uh, I mean, if, if you can provide well, what is the best thing uh, if he, uh, I mean, produce the, how, I mean, how it will uh, get better yields. I mean, if you could do that information, I mean, if you could provide that information to the 
uh, agricultural sector, I mean farmers, I think uh, to be, I mean again, to be used in their own language, I think that that is again combined with the use case one and use case two, it will be a huge hit again. My third use case is a healthcare. I mean, uh, again, healthcare industry, we, uh, there are a few applications which can be used for our common, uh, uh, common issues like everyday scars and uh, things. I mean, I can ask uh, some applications to provide me some tips on uh, uh, if there is something uh, happened to me. But we don't have a bigger conversation. I mean, we cannot uh, converse uh, lengthy. I mean, we. I mean, if we have, I mean, we have uh, very dangerous diseases like cancer, diabetic. Currently, uh, using AI, we could uh, identify those. Uh, uh, diseases very early, but we are not able to uh, give that uh, information using uh, voice enabled uh, interfaces. Like, uh, I mean, if you notice, uh, uh, even in uh, Bombay uh, Tata Health uh, uh, Cancer Center, there are people, I mean, around 70 to 80 percent of people who are uh, coming there from the rural areas. I mean, they're, they're not a part of Maharashtra, they're not part of Bangalore. Only 15 to 20 percent of people are local people. But a lot of people are coming from the outside. They are, they don't know the technology. I mean, if we, if we could provide some insights uh, to them, early insights to them uh, with their respect to these uh, diseases, I think uh, that is again a, a big uh, success. I mean, we could do a lot of uh, things for these users. Uh, design process, uh, I mean, uh, it is definitely, I mean, uh, we, ha we have identified these use cases. What is the design process we can use to, uh, uh, it is definitely, uh, so traditionally we are always doing graphical user interfaces. We, we haven't, we are just starting to do uh, voice user interfaces. So what is, I mean, uh, the design process is uh, typically different from what uh, GUIs uh, and uh, VUIs. So uh, what is the design process we need to uh, follow for the voice user interfaces? One is uh, your uh, conversational anticipations. So, so as a user, I mean, as a designer, you should be able to identify what are those conversational anticipations, what are the uh, keywords user is going to use. We have to anticipate that first and uh, uh, provide your uh, uh, inputs uh, to the machine. And uh, second one is adaptability. Design adaptability is user uh, can, uh, I mean, there, there could be multiple things user can uh, say in different uh, types. For example, uh, one example I can uh, see is, uh, I can say uh, my vacation starts tomorrow, I am out of office tomorrow. So both are basically the same things, but uh, it, uh, different uh, um, uh, ways user can uh, interact with your machine. And uh, we should be, I mean, as a designer, we should be able to anticipate uh, happy path as well as non-happy path uh, to the user. Uh, as a, I mean, graphic user interface design, you have uh, uh, navigation where user, I mean, he can see the navigation structure. Even if he lost somewhere, he can come back uh, and find his way. But uh, in graphic, I mean, in voice user interface, there is no visual cue for the user where he can, uh, if, if we not able to provide him uh, with the proper navigation structure, uh, there will be a lot of error messages uh, uh, will be on the, for, for him. I mean, he cannot uh, come back uh, to what exactly he is looking for. So how we can, uh, I mean, what is the design process we can, uh, so what I, uh, I mean, there are different type of design process we can approach. What I feel is the majorly three, three things. Uh, one is user, one is user-centered research, how user, uh, can do the research uh, for coming up with these applications. Second one is iterating, sketching out your interaction flows. So basically, before doing anything, I mean, first thing is you need to do user-centered research, similar to how we do for graphic user interfaces. For VUIs also, we should uh, do a user-centered research uh, first, then sketch out uh, the interaction flows how uh, the dialogue, uh, I mean, we should be able to uh, sketch out the dialogue flows as well as 
interaction flows. Third one is testing those interaction flows. You, uh, you have to test those interaction flows with your uh, colleagues or there are some applications where you can test them as well. So uh, as part of a user-centered research, what are, I mean, these are the four things uh, as a designer we should be able to answer before moving ahead with the interaction flows. One is uh, what is the purpose of the system? So uh, identify how, why exactly we are doing this application and how user can invoke. So for example, for Alexa, you, you say Alexa or computer. I mean, how uh, you users can invoke your application. That is one we have to identify. And uh, uh, what I mean, what information does system require? So that is also uh, one major thing uh, you have we, have we need to understand. So mapping out the interaction flows or sketching out uh, the interaction flows is a second uh, part of a design process. So so we need, as a designer we need to identify what are the keywords user can uh, uh, interact with our applications and what are the I mean, welcome, error messages, we, all those things we, we should be able to provide as part of uh, the, that interaction flows. And entry and exit points of conversation and uh, example dialogues. As I said, we should be able to uh, write the example uh, dialogues uh, starting from the, I mean, you take the use case, start the, uh, I mean, writing those dialogues and uh, you should be able to complete that complete flow before uh, uh, doing this. Next part is uh, testing those interaction flows. So there are a few, uh, few tools from Google where you can uh, test. Otherwise, you can test these uh, interaction flows with your colleagues as well. So as part of these uh, uh, testing, you should be able to uh, test conversational dead ends. What, what are the conversational dead ends you need to test? And the interaction where uh, flow is chopped. I mean, if you uh, test this uh, with your uh, friend or with your colleague, you should be able to understand uh, how this uh, conversation is taking uh, uh, apart. I mean, uh, missing. I mean, if uh, while doing this testing, you will come to know if, uh, as part of the, that use case, if you are missing something. You should be able to understand that as well. And the system feedbacks. I mean, th those are uh, important for uh, user. Uh, I mean, if you're not able to, uh, we should be able to guide users uh, through these system feedbacks as well. Uh, so we, we have taken, I mean, we have seen uh, the use cases. We have seen the three design process we can uh, follow to design voice user interfaces. Now we are looking at the design, I mean, uh, actual designing and testing, testing these uh, VUIs. So where exactly we'll start? I mean, uh, first thing is we need to identify focus groups. How do we, I mean, we can do this within our, uh, I mean, within our organization, we can uh, actually employ a couple of people, I mean, a couple of uh, people from different age groups and uh, different uh, departments. And we should be able to, uh, uh, I mean, tell our uh, problem statement, and we should able to take their uh, inputs uh, for uh, for this one. And uh, second part is, uh, as I told, flow design and uh, sketching out the flow design. This is, a, I mean, example of uh, how we can uh, design a. So we can use uh, tools like uh, Drio and v Visual Lucid Charts. I mean, there are few, there are other tools also we can use, but Majorly, our focus should be how uh, user uh, uh, interaction uh, with the system is happening. That, that is how we, we should be able to do it. I mean, again, uh, as part of uh, designing, role play of usability testing is again very important. How we do it, I mean, the goal is to identify again uh, what is the feedbacks and all. Based on the feedback we have received from uh, the user testing, we, we should iterate uh, the interaction and uh, based on the feedback. So key insights of, uh, so I mean, key insights are the, even uh, we are getting started, but there is uh, very less documentation uh, for a designer to get started uh, with the voice user interfaces.